my friends. I'm going to try to encourage everyone to find a seat if you haven't found one already. We are going to try to get started with our Seder in about a minute or two. So uh, let me encourage you to please, uh, you guys can sit anywhere. There are no assigned seats, but we don't want anyone sitting alone. So this is a family style meal. And so uh, filling in wherever you can find seats. But the sooner you sit down, the sooner other people will know where there are free seats. For some of our teens, if you guys are looking for spots, there are tables over there if you want to sit over there as well. friends if you can all grab a seat please that will help everyone to know where there are remaining seats and if you if you have some remaining seats at your table can you just raise your hand so people can see so if you're looking for seating um, there are a couple seats I see at these tables over here um, you can please come join in. We don't want anyone sitting by themselves. No one sitting by themselves, please. All right, so friends, Good evening, everyone. My name is Will. I'm the lead pastor here at All Souls. Welcome to All Souls Community Church. If you've never been here before, uh, you're coming as a guest of a friend. We are excited that you're here. Thank you for making the time to be a part of this with us. If you've never been to a Seder before, you're in for a treat. 
because the Passover Seder, people are always asking us, wait, you're a Christian church and you do a Passover Seder? What's that all about? Well, here's what it's all about in a nutshell. You know, when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we call it communion, right? Or the Lord's Supper. The Lord, when Jesus was, was celebrating the Lord's Supper, he didn't call it communion or the Lord's Supper. He was celebrating the Passover. And he was trying to show everyone that he was with, his disciples and the watching world, that he is indeed the fulfillment of the Passover. That he is the Passover lamb that was slain for the forgiveness of, the, of sins for everyone who put their faith in him. Everyone who gets covered with his blood is set free. Hallelujah. Amen. And so what we do here, if, if you are Jewish and you're here and you're like, hey, I've never participated in a Christian Seder before. A few things to keep in mind. We are absolutely not kosher here. So the food you will eat and everything we participate in, we're not trying to be kosher. And so please, if you expected a kosher meal, we, our apologies, I will eat your meal for you. Um, so, but we will encourage you to enter in however you can. Um, we're going to tell this story from um, step to step, and this is a participatory meal, which is why our kids are with us, right? Our kids aren't always with us, but when you eat dinner, they're with you most of the time, hopefully, right? So this is all about serving one another. We're going to go through step by step different things that we have to do, hand washing and, and filling each other's cups and breaking matzah and, and sharing that matzah with one another. And here's the one rule we have here. You can never serve yourself. Did you hear what I just said? Please do not serve yourself. Everyone at the table is going to take a turn serving someone else. It is a beautiful invitation to enter into the spirit of what this week is actually all about. For it was on this night when our Lord Jesus reserved an upper room for his 12 best friends. And when they got there, they were all sweaty and stinky. And Jesus was the one who took off his apron, his outer garment, tied it around his waist like an apron, and washed their stinky feet. And then he said to them, as I've loved you here, I want you to learn to love one another. A new command I give you, love as I have loved you. Tonight is an opportunity for us to enter into that together. And so it's okay if it gets a little loud. It's okay if there's stuff that spills on the floor. Let's try not to spill any juice or wine on the floor. Um, a couple of things just to point out. Every table has a carafe of juice and a carafe of water. Um, it, mo most of you have brought wine. You followed the instructions. I see that. If some of you are here like, oh, I didn't bring any wine, um, and I, we're, we're kind of low on that, ask one of our servers, and uh, they can help you with that. We want to make sure that everyone has um, wine if they're, if they're looking for that. I see some—there's uh, Michael Narciso in the back. Can we just give Michael a, a round of applause? And Michelle, can you stand up? Michelle. So th it takes a village to do this, so there are a ton of people helping, but the two of them are really the, 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 the dynamic duo. I, I mentioned to them before, one of them is Batwoman and the other's Robin, but I won't say who is who, right? Um, but uh, no, it's just, they, they've done a fantastic job for us, and we're so grateful for those two and for their team. Um, most of you in here have helped in some way, so it is, it is definitely a family meal for us. So. Um, Kristen, I didn't, I didn't ask you this, but I would like for you to be my click person. Could you click on that for me? There you go. Look at that. So Haggadah, what is Haggadah? It literally means the telling. Each of you on your tables, there are at least two copies of that for those who would prefer paper, but there are screens literally all over this place. So the Haggadah is going to be on the screen, but it's also on the paper um, if you prefer that. So Haggadah means telling. Telling what? The telling of the story. Or to put it differently, the telling of his story. Have you ever thought about that before? History is actually a declaration that it's his story. And it has been from the beginning. And so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to enter into this story that the Jews have been entering into their entire existence. Ever since the Exodus, the Jews have been entering into this story that we're going to enter into this night. But what we're going to do is make the connections forward to how Jesus actually fulfills this Seder meal, the Passover lamb who was slain. 
Perfect timing. That was wonderful. Whoever just did that, that was you, John. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So what we do at this table up here, you are going to do at your tables down there. And so we need to have one woman at each table. Um, and you can see from, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, the lighting of the candles, there's going to be one woman from each table who's going to light the candles. And uh, for us, Melanie is going to do this, and she is going to recite the part that there is uh, at the, the telling. So let me start. As we kindle the festival lights, we pray for the illumination of the Spirit of God to bring great personal meaning to this, our Passover celebration. So let's go ahead and, Melanie, take it away. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has set us apart by his word and in whose name we light the festival lights. As light for the festival of redemption is kindled by the hand of a woman, we remember that our Redeemer, the light of the world, came into the world as a promised seed of a woman. And uh, I, I realized that I didn't pray for us. Let me do that real quick, really quickly, and then we'll continue with our Seder. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that uh, even when we forget, even when I forget, you don't. Thank you for calling us to this place to turn our attention in your direction. And Lord, to ask that you would indeed come as we just spoke, that this, the spirit of the living God would fall freshly upon us in this place on this night, and that all of us would experience the grace that you alone give us, Jesus. Thank you that you are indeed the deliverer. You are the redeemer. You are the faithful God of chesed love who's made promises and intends to keep every one of them. And so, Lord, as we enter into this meal, would you minister to our hearts? Would you help our hearts and our minds to be open to what you're doing? And God, would you not just fill our bellies, but would you fill our hearts with your love? We pray for our good and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So now we're up to the four cups of wine. As the Lord spoke these words of encouragement to Moses, he revealed uh, to his servant the plan by which he would redeem the children of Israel. So let's recite together. I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. The four cups of wine of Passover remember the four I wills of God as he promised to redeem his people. With each cup of wine, let us remember the redemption that God has promised. And so the first cup, the cup of sanctification, is the I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And so we're going to fill our first cups. Remember, you have to serve. Do not fill your own. Let's serve one another. And uh, just a word to the wise friends, I would not fill your cup all the way. Because you're going to need to empty your cup all the way. So, not all the way filled. So we have a special guest uh, up here with us today. Dr. Charlie is going to be uh, reading the Hebrew for us. And so um, we're going to lift our cups, and he's going to recite the Hebrew, and we're going to recite the English. So let's lift our cup together and bless the name of the Lord. Dr. Charlie. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Pri Together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, 
who creates the fruit of the vine. As he began his final Passover Seder, Yeshua the Messiah shared a cup of wine with his disciples and said to them, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Let us all drink the cup of sanctific sanctification, the first cup of Passover. Let's drink together. L'chaim. We are now up to the washing of the hands. Let us now offer the water to one another and share in this hand-washing ceremony. Let us also reflect upon the humility of the Messiah Yeshua when on the evening of his final Seder, he laid aside his garments and girded himself with a towel together. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. Now, remember, we are not doing foot washing. In fact, uh, if for our sole youth, this should resonate deeply because they literally just did some foot washing this past Sunday night. And if you've not heard some of the stories of how the Lord met them in that evening and melted hearts, you should ask them during the meal about the foot washing. Tonight, however, we are simply washing hands, and it is ceremonial. Hopefully you've already come in with clean hands. If you need a real hand washing, the bathrooms are over there. I encourage you to go and use some soap. But for tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to, again, take turns. You have a pitcher and a bowl. Here's your bowl, and you're going to take turns pouring water over one another's hands, okay? So the bowl should be on the table when you do it, so you can have both hands there. You wash them, and then there's a, there are some paper towels that you can use there at the table to dry. So let's wash one another's hands. It looks like most everyone is done washing hands. Good job, everyone. So we are going to, if you're finishing up, you can go ahead and continue to finish up. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start reading about the parsley and the salt water. Everyone has a Seder plate. And on the Seder plate, you have some of this green stuff. This is your parsley. The parsley is called carpus. It has two meanings. It's green to remind us of life which is created and sustained by Almighty God. Amen. It also serves to remind us of the hyssop that was used to place the blood of the Passover lamb upon the doorframe. Everyone should also have some salt water in a container that looks like this. It's the little guy right here. Life in Egypt for the children of Israel was a life of pain, suffering, and tears represented by the salt water. 
The salt water also represents the Red Sea through which the Lord develop, uh, de delivered the children of Israel. Let us take a sprig of the parsley and dip it into the salt water, remembering that life is sometimes immersed in tears. And together, blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the earth. Now let us together eat the carpus. So let's, let's go ahead and dip some of the parsley into the salt water. Remember, we're going to share with one another, and then we'll eat together. It's more, it's more authentic that way. As everyone is finishing up with the carpus, I'm going to invite Annie to come on up. Annie writes. And Annie is going to read the four questions of Passover for us. How different is this night from all other nights? On all other nights, we eat bread or matzah. On this night, why do we only eat matzah? On all other nights, we eat all kinds of vegetables. On this night, why do we only eat bitter herbs? On all other nights, we do not dip our vegetables even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? On all other nights, we eat our meals sitting or reclining. On this night, why do we eat only reclining? It is both a duty and a privilege to answer the four questions of Passover and to recite the mighty works of our faithful God. And so we are up to the matzah part. Um, on all other nights, we eat bread with leaven, but on Passover, we eat only matzah, unleavened bread. As the children of Israel fled from Egypt, they did not have time for their dough to rise. Instead, the hot desert sun baked it flat. But even more than that, the matzah is a picture of the Messiah. Leaven is used throughout the scriptures as a symbol for sin. The absence of leaven is a symbol of sinlessness together. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin, a lamb without blemish or defect. The three matzahs are wrapped together for Passover. The rabbis call these three a unity, yet they were unable to explain its meaning. Some see it as the unity of the patriarchs, others as the unity of the priest Levites and the people of Israel. We who know Yeshua the Messiah see it as the tri-unity of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the matzah, we can see the stripes of the Messiah. And so you should have a, a plate with three matzahs on it, and what I would like one of you to do at your table is to hold one of the matzahs up so that everyone at your table can see that you can see the stripes. And let's recite together. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. The matzah is pier pierced. Can you see it? The holes that shine through with the light, right? So let's read together. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. Can I just point out right there? how clearly that passage is pointing us to Jesus. Amen. And it's from Zechariah. 
This is not a New Testament passage, friends. They shall mourn as one mourns for an only son. They shall look upon the one whom they have pierced. Old Testament prophecy fulfilled in our Jesus. Amen. This is the bread of the affliction, all three of these together. The poor bread, which our fathers ate in the land of Egypt, let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who are in need share the hope of the Passover. So what I'd like for each person to do at the table who has the matzah is, is you're going to remove the middle piece of matzah, the middle piece. It's important that it's the middle. Just as the middle piece of the bread of affliction is broken, so let's break ours. Does this look familiar to you? Right? Every time, when do we do this? We call it the Lord's Supper, communion, right? Every time. Just as the, the middle piece of the bread of affliction is broken, Yeshua also was afflicted and broken. One half of the broken matzah is now called the afikomen, the coming one. We wrap it in a white cloth just as the body of Yeshua was wrapped for burial. And so everyone should have a white cloth. You want to wrap that in it? I have a special little bag here. So I get to wrap mine in this special afikomen bag. And I hope as, even as we're going through these little steps, you're starting to catch the picture here, right? The middle piece of matzah is broken and then wrapped in a cloth and we're about to do something with it next. Keep listening. You're going to see Jesus all over this. Now let's share a piece of the unleavened bread of Passover. So you're going to break um, the other half of the broken matzah into small pieces and give each person uh, at the table a piece. So let's do that now. Right, so we're going to eat this together. If you've already eaten your piece, there's no grace for you. Sorry. Sorry, I'm looking at you, Winslow. I'm looking at you, Winslow. No, there is always grace. But the idea is to try to eat together. So let's hold up the piece and let's recite this together. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. to the bitter herbs. On all other nights, we eat all kinds of vegetables, but on Passover, we eat only marar, bitter herbs. As sweet as our lives are today, let us remember how bitter life was for the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. And so, uh, is this our marar here? Everyone should have a little bowl of this at your table. Thank you. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and work them ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter with hard labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to take the top piece of matzah. We're going to break it up and give everyone a piece. And then we're going to dip it into the bitter herbs. Uh, but remember, don't eat it yet. We're going to eat it all together, okay?
So friends, you should be looking for the horseradish on your, your plate, right? The, the, the bitter herbs, the horseradish. So if, if you dipped it into something sweet, I actually ended up holding up the wrong bowl for you. So horseradish should be on the Seder plate if you don't have another. For those of you in the back who may have missed it, Kristen literally just spit out her matzah because she was about to eat it before we all ate together. So you're in good company if you started to eat yours already. So let's, uh, let's recite this together and then we're going to eat the marar. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has set us apart by his word and commanded us to eat bitter herbs. Let's eat together. to the charoset. Can we say that together? Charoset, right? It's back here. It's back here. If you're not spitting on the person next to you, you're not saying it well. All right? It's a guttural. Charoset. On all other nights, we do not dip vegetables even once, but tonight we dip them twice. So this was, this is the charoset, right? Um, what we had up there before. The children of Israel toiled to make treasured cities for Pharaoh, working in brick and clay. We remember this task in a mixture called charoset, which resembles mortar and is symbolic of the mortar used by the Israelites to make the bricks. It reminds us that our faithful father does not give us more than we can bear, and he makes a way out of adversity for us. So we're going to break up the bottom piece of matzah now. We're going to distribute it to one another, and then we're going to dip it in the charoset, and we're going to eat together. So let's go ahead and, sh and serve one another. Looks like most everyone is done. So let's go ahead and recite this together. We dip the bitter herbs into a charoset to remind ourselves that even the most bitter of circumstances can be sweetened by the hope we have in God. Let's eat together. On all other nights, we eat either sitting or reclining, 
But tonight we eat reclining. Just pretend like you're reclining right now. There you go. See that? Awesome. The first Passover was celebrated by people enslaved. Together, once we were slaves, but now we are free. The children of Israel were instructed to eat the Passover in haste. Their loins girded, their staffs in their hands, their sandals upon their feet, awaiting departure from the bondage of Egypt. Today, we all may recline and freely enjoy the Passover Seder. Together, Messiah said, Come unto me, all you who are struggling and burdened, and I will give you rest. Amen. Amen. The next part is the story of Passover. So let's dig in here. The story of Passover is a story of miracles, a story of redemption, a story of the mighty power of God to overcome evil. Together, once we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord in his goodness and mercy brought us out of that land with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Had God not rescued us from the hand of the destroyer, surely we and our children would still be enslaved, deprived of freedom and human dignity together. Once we worshipped idols and were enslaved by our sins, but God in his goodness and mercy forgave our transgressions and called us to be his people. Therefore tonight is different from other nights because we have gathered to remember who we are, what God has done for us, and to tell our children the story of God's grace and deliverance. Together, praise be to God who is everywhere. Praise be to God who has brought us freedom and has delivered us from all that enslaves us. All right. God had promised Abraham and Sarah that they would be a great people, a promise he renewed to each generation, to Isaac and Jacob. As time passed, Jacob's children came to live in the land of Egypt, where his son Joseph was advisor to Pharaoh. But years passed, and another Pharaoh came to, pass to power who did not remember Joseph and did not know his God. So he enslaved the Israelites. He forced them to work hard, making bricks of clay and straw with which to build his cities. As the people increased in numbers, he feared that they might rebel against him. So he ordered every newborn boy drowned. They knew only toil, suffering, and tears. They cried out from their cruel oppression, hoping that God would remember the promises he had made to the fathers. And God heard their cry and remembered the covenant he had made with Abraham. Through a wise mother and sister, God saved the life of the boy Moses from the ruthless hands of Pharaoh. After Moses had grown up, God sent him to deliver the Israelites from, this, from the slavery of Egypt and promised Moses that he would be with him. And yet... When Moses asked Pharaoh to free the Israelites, he refused and increased their labor. So God sent ten plagues on Pharaoh and the land of Egypt so they might know that the Lord is God and let the people go. Amen. We're now up to the second cup. I will free you from being slaves. God sent plagues one by one, yet with each plague, Pharaoh hardened his heart. Let us fill our cups a second time. Let's go ahead and do that now.
A full cup is a symbol of joy. And indeed, on this occasion, we are filled with joy at God's mighty deliverance. But let us also remember the great cost at which redemption was purchased. Lives were sacrificed to bring about the release of God's people from slavery in Egypt. But a far greater price purchased our redemption from slavery to sin, the death of Messiah. As we recite each plague, let us dip a finger into the cup, allowing a drop of liquid to fall, reducing the fullness of our cup of joy this night. So in case you didn't catch that, we're literally going to stick our finger into the cup. And on our plates, let me recommend that on your plate, uh, we're going to go ahead and dip the cup with each time we're going to call out one of the names of the plagues. Okay? So dip your finger in, and we're going to say blood, frogs, lice, beasts, cattle disease, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, death of the firstborn. We're not going to drink our cup yet. But we're going to recite this with regard to the Passover lamb. So let's go to the next slide, please. Together, we have eaten the matzah to remind us of the haste with which the children of Israel fled Egypt. We have tasted the bitter herbs to remind us of the bitter slavery they experienced together. So if someone is near the, pass the Seder plate and you want to pick up the bone, you can do that. This bone reminds us of the lambs whose blood marked the houses of the children of Israel, signifying their obedience to God's command. God said, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. This bone reminds us especially of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Yeshua, our Messiah. When we're covered in his blood, the wrath of God and all of the brokenness in this world passes over us. Hallelujah. Let's recite together. Blessed are you, O God, for you have in mercy supplied all our needs. You have given us Messiah, forgiveness for sins, life abundant and everlasting. Hallelujah. So let us lift up uh, our second cup together and bless the name of the Lord. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Pari HaGofen Together, blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Let us all drink the second cup together. Let me encourage you to do one, one thing right now. Look down at your plate and see how messy it is. And remember the cost that it took, not just to s s free slaves from Egypt, but the cost that it took to free slaves from sin and death. It's a picture of a bloody mess on your plate, not to be gross, but to be real. It comes at great cost. And our God said, I will pay it because I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So friends, this comes the time in our, uh, our evening together where we actually eat real food. There are some of you in here who sat down at the table, you've never been to a Seder before, and you're like, if that's all we're eating, I'm leaving. I, I heard it. I heard it, right? It was from the inside, but I heard your mind, right? And I, I have great news for you. We have terrific food that's going to come out and fill your bellies for dinner. And so there are servers who are going to bring it up to your table. You don't need to go anywhere. It's family style. They're going to put it in the middle of the table. As soon as your food comes, you may eat it. Let me, let me ask the blessing on the food. And then um, we're going to eat for about 20, 30 minutes. And when we're done eating, we're going to return and go through the last two cups of the Passover together. But let me pray for us. Jesus, we are so grateful that we get to enter in with our whole selves, Lord, with our minds, with our hearts, with our bodies. We get to enter into this story that you say is ours because we're yours. And so, Lord, we can cry out with our Jewish brothers and sisters against oppression.
oppression, against slavery, against injustice. We can cry out to a God who says, not only do I hear you, but I'm willing to pay the price to set you free. Thank you for how we saw that in Moses at the Exodus and how we see that in you, Lord Jesus, on Good Friday and Easter Sunday and every day. Would you come, Lord, and fill our hearts with more of your love? Would the fellowship around our tables be sweet and rich? Would you bless this food and the many hands that have prepared it? Thank you for this night. You didn't have to love us so abundantly so as to give us an experience like this. But here we are, and here you are, and we praise your holy name. Bless this food and everyone who's partaking of it tonight. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, when your food arrives, you are free to eat. If you need the restrooms, they are over to the, your, your well, that side. <laughs>
right, friends, uh, just as a heads up, dessert is coming out. So uh, you need to make sure you've opened up your dessert stomach, which is different than your regular stomach. You have a whole other stomach for dessert food. So we're going to give you a couple minutes to eat some dessert, and then we're going to jump back into our Seder. So uh, please uh, go ahead and enjoy some of that, and we'll get started in a couple of minutes. All right, friends, I'm going to ask everyone to head back to their seats, please. So we can continue with our Seder.
So I have a confession to make to the kids in the room. In a traditional Seder, you would take the afikoman and hide it, and then whatever kid found it would get treats. But what we decided to do is to give everyone treats. So we didn't hide the afikoman, but normally you would hide the afikoman. But you've got treats on every table, and uh, quite honestly, having little kids running all over the room probably isn't the best idea in a room this full, right? Um, but we're going to talk about the afikoman, and quite honestly, this is one of my favorite parts of the Seder. And so uh, please give a listen as I read through this portion for us. The afikoman, which, which means that which comes after, is the piece of matzah that was broken from the middle piece of the unity. The afikoman was added to the Seder after the destruction of the temple in AD 70 to represent the Passover lamb. In some ways, Jesus anticipated the afikoman when he established the Lord's Supper. The afikoman provides a vivid picture of the Messiah. It is broken from the second portion of the unity, which, as we saw earlier, is a representation of the Trinity. It is wrapped in cloth and hidden away as Yeshua's body was wrapped in cloth and buried in the grave. As the afikoman would later represent the Passover lamb, so Yeshua used the bread of the Passover to represent his sacrifice. And so I want you guys to all take out your, the afikoman um, from its place of being wrapped and hidden. And we're going to break off pieces and share it around the table. Let's do that together now. I've noticed again that some of you have forgotten to wait to eat together. I want to encourage you to spit it out on the table in front of you and then go ahead and pick it back up and let's, uh, <laughs> let's eat the matzah meditating on the body of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Let's eat together. We're now up to the third cup, the cup of redemption. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. The leader, uh, uh, the cup of redemption recalls the blood of the Passover lamb. This is the cup that Yeshua used when he established the Lord's Supper. So we're going to all, again, take turns filling each other's cups. And remember, every Sunday when we do the Lord's Supper, it represents this cup. This is the cup. And so when you, when you trace out the flow of the Passover meal, Jesus is engaging just as we are. He's, he's sharing in the joy of each cup. He's sharing in the story of the bitterness, but also the joy mixed together. And then right after this cup, he gets up and he leaves the supper and goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. This is the cup of redemption that we have with the Lord's Supper every time we celebrate it. So let's re recite this together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Let us drink the cup, meditating on the blood of Yeshua, which cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Lachayim. All right, we are on to the fourth cup, the cup of praise. I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Let us fill our cups for the fourth and last time and give thanks to God, our great Redeemer, in the, in the, the words of the great Halal, Psalm 136. So let's again fill our cups.
right, so a couple of words of instructions for what we're about to do here. We are about to recite the great halal. Uh, hallelujah, praise Yahweh. The great halal is where we get that from, right? That's the Hebrew. And so there's more than just you see on the screen here. If you have one of the printouts, you already know that. Here's the way we do this. I read the part that says uh, leader, and when it says all, you guys are going to come in, and you're going to come in quietly at first, and we're going to build and build and build until at the very end of this, we're actually screaming, his love endures forever. So you've heard me use the word chesed before. Chesed means his covenant faithfulness. He's the God whose love endures forever. So we are declaring that with every ounce of our beings. So what I want to encourage you to do is actually stand with me. And let's do this together. So let's start with a whisper. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever. And brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led his people through the desert, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 When we engage like that, doesn't it resonate with something deep inside of your soul that makes you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we were made to praise? the only one who is worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's raise our cups. Let's lift our cups and bless the name of the Lord. Charlie. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Borei peri hagofen Together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe who creates the fruit of the vine. Let's drink together the cup of praise. And I'm going to invite you to stay, remain standing as we're going to sing uh, a song together. Rana's going to lead us in, um, as is our tradition here. And uh, yeah, so find the song uh, lyrics on one of the screens. If you're not familiar with it, you can just move your mouth and everyone will think you're singing. Just kidding. E engage. Engage with your heart and watch God meet you, huh? Song of ages to the Lamb. 
Amen. Amen. Let's praise God with our hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It's always been your story, Lord. It's always been one story. And we praise you that even tonight, we got to taste a big, hearty taste of not just that story, not just the deliciousness of this food, not just the new friends and old friends of reconnecting with, but we got to taste a big portion of your heart. Yeah. And God, we praise you for that. For everyone who's used to this thinks that it never gets old. Yeah. For everyone who's tasting for the first time, thank you that you set a, a, ta a place at the table for every one of us. So, Lord, would you continue to woo our hearts even tonight? Show us more of your love. And, God, grow us in that love, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Our Passover Seder is now complete. We leave with the taste of the afikoman matzah in our mouths, the taste of faith, our Creator's covenant commitment, and His mighty plan of redemption. And we leave with the taste of wine from the cup of hope and praise, reminding us that we await the future with hope of Messiah's coming again. As Yeshua Himself said, For I tell you, it is certain that I will not celebrate Passover again until it has given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. Together, amen. Come, Lord Yeshua. So friends, amen. We can praise him. We can praise him. So a, 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 couple of, a couple of things before we head out here tonight. First, can we, I see a bunch of our chefs in the back and a bunch of our team lead in the back. We just praise God for what a gift, what a gift. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, all of our cooks. We love you, brothers. We love you. And sister. Where, where's Kitty Cat? She was there, too. Thank you for everyone who helped. So a couple of things, friends. Tomorrow night at 630, we have a Good Friday service that, similar to the Passover Seder, is an invitation to actually enter in. It's not just to sit and receive, but it's to actually do what we've been doing here, to enter into the story and see our place in it. So we welcome you to come back to that. Tomorrow as a church, we have a habit of fasting and praying all day. So there are prayer guides on our website, but they're also at the door. If you would like a prayer guide, we pray through each hour of the day, and it's an awesome opportunity to just enter into that story. We'd love to have you be a part of that with us. Please come and be a part of that if you can. Our Easter service is at 10 o'clock in this space on Sunday. Uh, we would love to have you join us. Please come, bring friends. If it's standing room only, we don't care. We're going to praise our hearts out on Sunday morning. Um, and so one last thing before I, I basically I tell you that uh, the, the, the common line at the end of every Seder. This is a family meal. And one of the things that we do as a family is we help clean up. And so if you are able and willing, I'm going to give you instructions in just a minute as to how that will happen. But before I do, hear these words. Until next year in Jerusalem. Amen? Amen. 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 So here, here are some words of instruction for cleanup. Everything except for the stuff that's obvious, like the carafes and all the plastic, the candles, all that stuff. We're saving all of that stuff. That can go down to the kitchen. Everything else that we ate on can go into the garbages that are around the room. The, the, the round tables can go into the lounge uh, once they're stripped down of everything. And then we're going to set up the chairs, but we're going to vacuum before we do that. And so if you can give a hand, we would greatly appreciate it. All the chairs can go to the side of the room it's in stacks of six.
friends, all of the carafes and whatnot can go on the back table. We don't have to bring them downstairs. They're just going to go on the back table, okay? Thank you. The round tables are going to go in the lounge against the windows the, uh, to the right as soon as you go in. So we're going to stack them side by side in the lounge against the wall to your right as soon as you go in.